All right, uh, it's happening right today in Georgia. Get ready. Testimony in Donald Trump's election interference case could see Fonnie Willis disqualified over her relationship with the prosecutor she hired as the judge orders his former divorce attorney, Terrence Bradley, to take the stand. The judge expected to take issue with Nathan Wade's cell records showing thousands of interactions with Willis in 2021. Not only the phone, you see the voice text, you see the texts. Fox News contributor, GW, uh, George Washington University law professor, Jonathan Turley joins us now. Jonathan, uh, the law partner went behind closed doors for an hour and 20 minutes. When the judge emerged, uh, he said, we're going to have to see this front and center. What do you think he was looking for and what do you think he found? Well, the judge has been very cautious about privilege. This is a very odd profile uh, for a witness. You know, he was the former partner and also the former lawyer uh, for Nathan Wade in a divorce proceeding. And the judge wanted to make sure that he could speak to, to questions uh, as an individual uh, witness and not as uh, counsel to trip those wires. He apparently is satisfied that he can. Now, the Willis uh, team kept on preventing questions yep. uh, from the opposing counsel, who was trying to show that it was, in fact, this attorney that supported their original motion, that this relationship began long before Nathan Wade was hired. Now, whether we're going to finally see those questions answered is something we'll be watching closely today. Uh, but the case seems to be unraveling for Willis and Wade. Uh, in their testimony, they there was a great deal of contradiction, uh, particularly for Mr. Wade. Some of his earlier sworn statements uh, appear to be irreconcilable with, with the facts that he later testified to. That's a nice way of saying that people believe he may have lied uh, under the earlier sworn statements. That's pretty serious because these two are prosecuting people for making false statements and filing false papers with courts. And we can go so many different directions, but uh, real quick. So Bradley's his partner and his divorce attorney. If he comes out and tells the truth that this relationship started earlier, that will corroborate what the former friend said when the relationship started, which shows she put her boyfriend in charge of a case. And they may or may or not use cash that she used to keep in her house because of what her dad told her or not. And it shows that this former person who did wills and car accidents was in charge of prosecuting the former president of the United States. So I don't know if I'm the president, former president, maybe I want these two, uh, these two, uh, let's say, unskilled lawyers prosecuting me. Maybe the next people to come in might be competent. Well, the problem, Brian, is that the original allegations are really fading away because more serious problems okay. are now mounting. You know, if they committed perjury, if they filed false statements in court, uh, they could face uh, personal uh, charges. Uh, they could be referred to the bar. I mean, right. this, the stakes are very high here. I, I want and you to, they, thus far, have not been able to answer some of those questions. Some totally different, but I want to get you to weigh in on this. Uh, this former editor at the New York Times, now with The Atlantic, wrote this about what he was doing at the New York Times. He feels bad about it. He says, our goal was supposed to be a journalist, to be a journalistic rather than activist. This I learned in my two years at the Times is not the goal that everyone shared. Take the Hunter Biden laptop story. Was it truly unsubstantiated on paper uh, kept saying, as many kept saying, many of my colleagues were clearly worried that lending credence to the laptop story could hurt the electoral prospects of Joe Biden and the Democrats. So you talk about media being in the pocket, we assume it. Now we're getting confirmation on it. And the story is really long in the Atlantic and things that were compromised. But then New York Times was an advocate for Joe Biden, clearly. Well, this is just the latest such article. We've had previous editors talk about the bias at the New York Times and how uh, it has become an effective state media out outlet for the Biden administration. Uh, the problem is that this is coming out of J school. All these journalism schools are teaching reporters that objectivity is no longer the foundation of journalism, that advocacy is. And you see that come out in his descriptions in these sort of communal meetings. 
meetings where he's even attacked because he said he liked Chick-fil-A sandwiches and that resulted in just uh, no. just gasps uh, in, in this in this thing. That's the sort of ridiculous point we have come to. But the media right. is sawing on the branch upon which it is sitting by replicating this orthodoxy and bias in the media. Go get him, Jonathan Turley. We'll look forward to getting your analysis post-game <laughs> show today uh, in the afternoon on the Georgia case. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.